All right, this is going to be a tutorial on taking your print book versions into Scrivener and then outputting them into EPUB format or Kindle format. You can see here, this is the original print file that I have. It's set up as facing pages. It has margins, uh, gutters, and of course, tabs and paragraph breaks. What I've done outside of this broadcast is go ahead and transition that over here into a very simple text editor where I've removed the tabs. You can see that the same text appears here and there are still chapter breaks and paragraph breaks as well as one scene break that I'm going to show you how to add into Scrivener as well. So what we've got when we start Scrivener is the series of templates that we can use. I find it very useful just to use the standard templates that are provided. If your novel has part one, part two that you need to distinguish, then go ahead and use the novel with parts option. Otherwise, just the novel option is usually gonna work very well for you. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Now that we're loaded into Scrivener, there's the sidebar on the left and the sidebar on the right. The one on the right has a few options that we will possibly use from time to time. However, we're gonna mostly concentrate on the left-hand sidebar. You can see that it starts you off with a chapter and a scene heading. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is transfer in all of our document that I've cut and pasted into that first scene heading and then work backward from there. You can see that it added in all of the tabs for us already. Now, part of this is a prologue and I'll show you how to set that up. In order to do a prologue, you need to have it come before the first chapter marker. So if you click up on manuscript and then add a new document, either using the plus at the bottom here, or you can go and add a new document using your file menu. What I wanna do is drag it up so that it's on the same level as the chapter and then I'm just gonna title that prologue. Now the scene itself has the words prologue. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of those and we're just gonna take the text of the prologue and get that out of there and dump that into our prologue field. So now here you can see it's the prologue with no other formatting. Same thing here, this says chapter one on it but we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that chapter one and we're going to just leave the chapter one text alone. It's all one scene, so I'm gonna go ahead and extract chapter two out of it and paste that into the next file. Each chapter needs its own folder. So you click on the add a folder, either the button at the bottom or out of the menu. And in this case, I'm just gonna name it two. I'll show you that these title names can be overwritten later on in this but for my own sanity, I usually name them just one and two. If I'm clicked on a, doc, a chapter and I click add a document, it automatically adds it as a subheading. These names are unimportant. They're actually more helpful for you. The end user very rarely will see them unless you actually ask Scrivener to output those titles for you. All right, again, I'm gonna strip out the actual chapter heading and any of the formatting, so we just have the plain text. As I mentioned, there is a scene break that occurs right here. So what I will do to add a scene is take out all of the information there from that scene and add a new document again under the same chapter. Under chapter two, I'm adding a new document which will create a scene break in the actual final output. All right, so we've taken our ebook, I'm sorry, our print book format that you saw here and we've translated almost into Scrivener. What you'll notice though is that there's a half head that transitions from the prologue into the actual text of the document. In order to create that, what we do is create a new document just like we did with the prologue. And I usually just name this half head. It'll appear in your table of contents, but most people won't notice that. And then if you go into the front matter, you can actually steal the half head out of the uh, ebook format. Or oh, I'm sorry, not the ebook, the paper where it says title page here. If you take this nice big project title, go into your half head, paste it there, and go ahead and left align it just for fun. This is one time where we're gonna choose the compile as is option over here, and I'll show you how to do that if you forgot when we get into the compile format itself. So now we have our book translated out of our normal program into Scrivener, and we're gonna get ready to format it into ebook. I have a prologue, I've added the half head, and then I have two chapters, and chapter two has two different scenes in it, and those will get output as well. The first part of this video is going to cover the ebook formatting, and then in a separate part, I'm going to show you how to do back into print format using Scrivener's options. 
The one thing that we don't have in the standard ebook format that comes with it automatically is a copyright page. So I'm actually just gonna go and duplicate that out of the paperback format and drag that over here into the regular ebook format. Any of the words that you have in these descriptions will appear in the table of contents. So I usually try to keep it simple, copyright dedication. You'll notice over in the actual document that the year tag and author tag are included for you as well as an ISBN number. I don't usually have ISBNs for my ebooks. Obviously, if you're not inside the US, it could be a little bit easier for you to get in a US ISBN. Um, these two information pieces are being pulled either from the system date or from the meta metadata settings. And let me show you how to get to those. If you go up to your document project, there should be something like this in your menu. And underneath that project, there should be metadata settings. The project properties are actually where it's going to pull the information for the rest of the document from. So in this case, we will just call it the test novel, but you would actually put in your titles here. And if you wanted to use a different author name or a different variation of your author name, you can fill those in as well. Now when it pulls out the author name, it will actually pull out my name and put it into this field. You'll also notice that it has a very generic cover. In this case, I actually have a cover for this book, so we're going to go ahead and import that and I'll show you how to do that. For me, under File, Import, it's gonna give me the option to search on my desktop and if I head over to the folder where I keep all of those, where you put the file inside the little folder, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna strip it out of there anyway and only include documents in the compile format. So there's the cover. We have a copyright page, which is gonna auto-generate the text for us. And then we have our dedication, which I'm gonna leave as generic at the moment. All of these options are gonna be controlled from the compile menu, which for me is under my file menu. You'll notice that it says format as here. In this case, we're going to choose the ebook format so that it's already got a few of our fields pre-selected for us and we're only gonna to have to make a few other options and I'll explain those as I go. Add the front matter, make sure that you select the ebook front matter. You can change the name of your title and author here as well. Notice that it asks now for the cover image in this case, I'm going to choose the cover image that I already uploaded. You could click compile and go from here, but there are some fun options that you can select on your own. So we're gonna to go to the all options and I'll show you what I usually do. Now, remember I said that you can click these options as they appear in the actual documents. You can actually select them here as well. So I do want a page break before my dedication, a page break before my prologue, a page break before my half head, and I would also like to have a page break before the individual chapter. Between chapters and your main Scrivener document will automatically put in page breaks, and I'll show you where that setting is in a moment. The as is tick makes sure that if you formatted the document the way that you wanna see it in the output, you don't accidentally overwrite it when you put it through the compile feature, which will normally take anything that you've put into there and reformat it according to the specifications that you'll tell it about. In this case, we do want the copyright, the dedication, and the half head all to be formatted as is, as we saw them on the screen. Whereas the prologue and the rest of the chapters, we want Scrivener to go ahead and overwrite the normal format and update them for ebook formatting. The separators, as I was telling you about, notice between a chapter and a document, there's an empty line in between a document and the next chapter, it will actually do a section break. That's helpful for the HTML formatting of your table of contents as well. So I very rarely change any of these. However, in between scenes, you do have the option of putting more than just an empty line if you wanna make it more apparent, depending on the readers that you're going after. You can select your cover here as well. This is the main area where you're gonna have most of your fun outputting and most of the issues that you'll run into with your outputting will occur from either using or misusing this field. Notice it has level one with a chapter, level one plus with multiple documents, and then another level one plus with single documents. This one and this one, the top and bottom, are the only two that are really going to affect your text. This is only for nonfiction formatting where you have several levels to your documents where you might wanna have subsections with special headings. If you click on the level one, the chapter, and you click on section layout, this field here, the chapter plus the little symbol, is what is outputting the chapter one information into your field down here. If you select 
your own chapter titles like I have, with those, which are simple words, you can actually get rid of this entirely. And you'll notice that the output changes. Now we just have titles. So whatever title you have for your individual chapter headings over here will get translated over to here. However, there are a few other options. You can go to your appearance for this, and you'll notice that you have the option of making it normal, uppercase, fixed small caps, or lowercase. So if you want to do a little bit of text decoration, you have that option as well. In this case, I'm just going to let whatever I typed in, which is lowercase, function through. At the top of each new chapter, it's going to add six lines of padding. If you want to have more or less so that your page starts higher or lower in the e-reader, you can select that here. You can also reformat this text. In this case, I like right align titles. And if I use the plus option, the command plus option, I can actually make that title come out a little bit bigger. Notice that there is a heading formats that you can use as well. Up here where it says override text and notes formatting, that's the actual override that overrides the compile as is tick uh, if you don't select it. Under here, there are some very things for, such as remove first paragraph indents. I don't want to remove them. I want them to stay. So I want to go ahead and unselect that. And you notice that you can also have other override information here and you can even override tabs and indents. Um, so if you have pasted without pre-formatting, you can take care of that in this section of the compile as well. In this case, I'm just going to remove the paragraph indents and move forward. You don't want to handle any formatting other than selecting body text for your level one plus or your document level. And you notice that the text mark is ticked here. That means the actual text of the chapters that I've included into the individual scenes. The EPUB formatting is going to take care of all of that. When we do the second video on how to format for print ready layout, then you will want to make some selections here. But for ebook, just go ahead and leave them alone because they're going to get overridden by the EPUB format anyway. There are other options here that I don't usually use there. Same here. If you want to look through the actual help file, you can find out more information about these informations. Transformations. Some people don't like to do this, but I actually like to straighten all of my smart quotes because there is a small issue with EM dashes and smart quotes working together in dialogue. So rather than searching my whole document for them, I go ahead and just convert everything to a smart quote. You notice that you also have the option of doing a lot more plain text conversions or rich text conversions, depending on the individual format that you're going toward. I normally leave HTML settings alone. You'll notice that it's going to convert all the Scrivener links to HTML links. That includes the table of contents links. If you use sort of uh, quick text while you're writing, you can actually set up to replace those with the real text in this scene here. Statistics and the tables, as well as the footnotes and comments, usually don't apply to your uh, novels, so you want to go ahead and leave those alone. Metadata, this is the last time to go ahead and change or input anything. Most of the sites that you upload to are going to create their own metadata file, but in case you sell your own ebooks, you would want to fill in this information so that the metadata is consistent across all of the platforms. Lastly, we go down to Compile For, and you'll notice that I have a few different options. So the first one that we're going to compile for is the EPUB format. And then I'm going to go ahead and just output that to my documents folder so it's easy to grab later. So other than the setup and the typing and actual creation, the formatting itself is very quick. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's, as you can see, your first page is a cover. We have our table of contents, and you notice that it didn't pull in those different words that I told you about. And then you can see our page breaks work perfectly. We have our prologue, our half head, and then into our chapter formatting. And as you can see, it added that first paragraph indent back in, which I tend to like in my formatting. And then if we jump over to chapter two, you see there is our scene break right there. So it went ahead and actually put that scene break in as a blank line, and we could have overrid that and have a very variety of options for that. I'm going to jump back into Scrivener to do the compile one more time. In this case, all I'm going to do to change it to a Kindle format is simply select the Kindle format. The very first time that you actually select Kindle format, you will have to come in here and download the little helper information from Amazon. Once it's installed, again, all you do is click Compile. And then let me show you the final output in Kindle format. So here's the Kindle reader. Again, all the information from before, our half head, 
and then to our chapter. And if we skip over to chapter two, we should see the scene break, same thing there. So you can see that the Scrivener output is actually pretty identical on both versions, both in the EPUB and in the Kindle, but of course it's formatting them into the different formats for you without any extra effort on your part. This is the end of part one, and in part two I'll show you how to output for a print-ready format. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more writing-related videos, as well as interesting panel discussions between new adult authors. You can check out some of my previous videos on the right. Questions and comments are always welcome on Twitter.